Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. Glad to be with you for this week's edition of Takedown. Well, the first leg of the United World Wrestling World Championships is now underway. And with the top 10 storylines from the junior division, we welcome Tony Hager. Tony. The Junior World Championships kick off this week in Finland, and Team USA is absolutely loaded with big names. Here are 10 wrestlers you need to watch this week. First up in Junior Freestyle, all eyes should be on Mark Hall every single time he steps on the mat. Hall will be wrestling for his third title after winning Cadet Gold and picking up a junior title last year. Many know Mark Hall for winning an NCAA title for Penn State as a true freshman, but where he really excels is on the freestyle scene. I'm looking for Mark Hall to bring home more hardware this year. Anything but gold will be a disappointment. Gable Stevenson makes wrestling look so easy. The Minnesota Gopher Bound has gone back to back in 100 kilograms at the cadet level, but this year he's making his debut at 120 kilograms at the junior level. Stevenson hasn't been tested domestically at 120, so look for Stevenson to continue to put his name in the record books. Let's move on back down to 55 kilograms where Dayton Fix, Oklahoma State recruit, will be making his junior world debut. Fix has fell short of gold the last two years at the cadet level, but has a bronze medal on his resume. Fix has rolled through this, his senior season in folk style and freestyle. Fix has the potential to pick up another gold for Team USA in Finland. Mark Hall isn't the only college star on this junior team. Ohio State's Colin Moore will represent at 97 kilograms. Moore placed third at the NCAA Championships and is well known for pushing Jaden Cox, an Olympic bronze medalist, mind you. Moore brings extremely great technique from his feet. Look for him to push the pace against these international wrestlers. I look for him to bring home a medal. Switching gears now to the women, at 55 kilograms, Ronna Heaton has made four world teams doubling up last year in cadet and junior divisions. Heaton picked up a cadet world title in 2015, but fell just short last year picking up the silver in cadets. After disappointing Fargo, I look for Heaton to have some extra motivation in Finland. Up a weight at 59 kilograms is Gracie Figueroa. Like Heaton has been on the last two cadet world teams with top 10 finishes, Figueroa improved last year with bringing home a bronze medal. Gracie is coming off a great Fargo national title where she shut out every single one of her opponents and picked up a stop sign with a fall. After dealing with injuries and a pair of top 10 finishes, Rachel Waters is a must watch in Finland. The Oklahoma City sophomore will represent USA for the third year in a row. What about the injury though? Well, it's been repaired. I think she's 100% now. Look for Rachel Waters to be in contention for a medal. My love for Greco continues to grow, and it's because of these guys right here at the junior level. These are guys you cannot miss this week. And who you should keep your eye on? Giangelo Hancock. For those of you that follow the senior level wrestling, you'll recognize this name. Hancock made the senior team this year and will, will represent the U.S. at the highest level, the World Championships in Paris, later this month. First though, he has to get it done at the junior level. He is the returning bronze medalist and he will be the favorite going into this tournament. Like I said, he's wrestling at a senior level at the moment, so coming back down here at the juniors, he should be a favorite at 96 kilograms. 60 kilograms will feature five-time world team member Taylor Lamont. Lamont is well-traveled overseas. He has the experience that seems to be always the excuse we have for our wrestlers, not Lamont. He came up just short last year, but still picked up a bronze medal for Team USA. He is one of Greco's future stars, so do not miss an opportunity to see him on the map this week. Let's move on up to 120 kilograms is Colton Schultz. Schultz is pulling double duty this year for Team USA, represented the cadets in September, and Schultz is here in the juniors in Finland. He's got the body style, handle these foreign guys, and he's not afraid to let it loose. So look for Schultz to let it loose in Finland. You can catch all the Junior World Championships on trackwrestling.com. Scott, back to you. All right, thanks, Tony. Hey, fans, keep it right here. You're watching Takedown thanks to Casey's General Stores. Casey's, famous for pizza. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting, and you should too.
West Virginia head coach Sammy Henson and Olympic bronze medalist Coleman Scott have been added to the U.S. World Team staff. The two will work alongside U.S. national freestyle coach Bill Zadick and will corner several senior freestyle athletes in France. So from a coaching perspective, you know, you've been a head coach now for a couple of years at the D1 level. And, and uh, you know, what do you feel that you bring to the table that you can share with these guys? Um, you know, probably just a different mindset. You know, it's a younger, uh, you know, I've, I've got a different out, outlook on a lot of things just because I am younger and I've only been in the game for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to just enhance these guys. I'm here to help them in, in any position, any any area that they may need. Um, you know, and, and that's that's our job is, is helping Bill out, right? He leads it and we, we just... We just help these guys get make the make sure uh, in August they're the best them, you know, stepping out on the mat. Yeah, I mean, and clearly you've had success, Olympic bronze medalist. That's kind of what these guys are mm -hmm. shooting for, you know. Uh, from your journey there, you know, what did you learn, and and how did these guys? What do they have to do to get there? Yeah, you know, I, I've felt a lot of failure in my life. So I've felt a lot of uh, ups and downs, and, and you know, pushing through it and making sure that we're ready. You know, when it when it is our time. You know, I've, I've been second, third, and on the ladder. I've you know, so I've sort of had all the feelings. You know, and, and so I can relate to a lot of them. And of course, I was teammates with a lot of them. You know, on the USA. So so we have that different connection. And um, and again, I'm just sort of I'm here to whatever they need. I'm here for them. It keeps me sharp. It's make, I think it makes me a better coach for my team. And also, I think giving back here, it means a lot to West Virginia University to be a part of this. And, uh, and the, my, my young athletes to see that, hey, their coach is a, you know, one of the main coaches on the Olympic level. And um, so, you know, it gives us all confidence, right? Joining Henson and Scott in the Springs, 2004 Olympian and the new head coach of the Oklahoma RTC, Eric Guerrero. USA Wrestling caught up with the newest member of the Sooner staff to talk about his decision and the future of freestyle in Norman. So you just made the move to OU. Um, talk about what your position is going to be like there. Uh, good question. I think when this was designed in a, from a concept standpoint, you know, it starts off as just, you know, the Oklahoma Olympic Regional Training Center. Obviously, you know, Lou's mastermind behind the Ohio Regional Training Center is well known. I mean, they had a tremendous amount of Olympic success, producing guys like Kyle Snyder, Olympic champ, Logan Steeper, world champ. So, you know, it, it's in that model. Um, but at the same time, you know, you take it, what, look at what Oklahoma's needs are right now. And the idea is obviously there's the trickle down from the Olympic athletes. Um, but we're not going to ignore the trickle up either, meaning um, I'm doing this for the state of Oklahoma. Uh, I'm doing this for, for not just the Olympic level, which is the primary duty, but doing this for uh, the youth, uh, you know, the, the up-and-comers, you know, the, the junior level, the cadet level, the schoolboy level. All those things are important to raise our state um, to an Olympic caliber state. So I'd say it's pretty all-encompassing. Um, I can't divulge too much at this point in time, but, uh, but we got some big plans that are pretty all-encompassing. And again, not just from the trickle down, but also the trickle up. We'll take a quick time out. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to our friends at McBride Mads, proudly made in the USA. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie.
What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin, Stay pure, stay clean, check them out, pureandcleansports.com. All right, welcome back to Takedown. The National Wrestling Hall of Fame's feature documentary series continues this week with Order of Merit recipient Greg Hatcher. A successful businessman and three-sport star at Alma College, Hatcher has helped start and fund more than 75 high school and collegiate programs around the country. My father was a um, English professor, so we started making moves as he got promoted. We moved from Baldwin, uh, Kansas to Parkville, Missouri. But because I'd moved too late, I couldn't make the basketball team. That week they had wrestling and gym class and I took seventh out of eight guys in the, in the wrestling gym class tournament. And I decided, well, I'll go out for wrestling since I can't do basketball. I beat the guy who won that tournament in double overtime to become the school's ninth grade varsity wrestler at 98 pounds, and I decided that I liked wrestling as a sport. My parents moved again, and this time we moved to Albion, Michigan, which was a school that was really not a very good high school. It had all kinds of problems. That high school wrestling team did not win a match. Uh, I was the best wrestler we had, but I was not a great high school wrestler. Um, I never got pinned, but I, I, I j we just weren't very good. But uh, after high school, I wanted to play three sports in college, so I went to Alma College and played soccer, wrestling, and baseball. And Alma was the opposite of everything I had in high school. At Alma, they won. We had great coaching, and we had a great team. And so I learned real quickly that you have to be in a wrestling room with a great coach and with uh, great wrestlers to be better. You know, I was the worst guy on my wrestling team on the first day, and then I turned out to be a pretty good wrestler. I learned to grind through it, and once I learned that grind and uh, that that extra effort paid off, it has carried forward in my life. When I got into the business world and I got to compete against just normal human beings, I, I found it very easy. They didn't understand the same sacrifice that a wrestler is used to putting forward. They, they, weren't, they weren't trained and they didn't have the same mentality. Business rewards persistency, hard work, you know, dedication and discipline. And that's what wrestling uh, teaches you. If we can get better every day and we make that a part of our core being, just imagine how high you can climb. I started my own insurance agency when I was 28 years old. At the end of our first year, we, we sold more health insurance than anybody in Arkansas, and we've done that for 26 uh, straight years. We, uh, we recently uh, were told that we were the largest organically grown insurance agency in the United States. When I moved to Arkansas, it did not have all the sports sometimes other states had, and so it was kind of depressing that we didn't have wrestling. and. It had probably been 20 years, and I got a call one day from Don Schuler in Northwest Arkansas, and he said, I heard you're a college wrestler. I know that you've done a lot of things in the community. At that time, I'd helped start the Little Rock Marathon. Um, I'd helped start the Mighty Bluebird Sports Organization. And uh, he said, would you be interested in doing wrestling? I said, I, I said it's been on my to-do list. Let's do it. So I got with a local radio personality, David Basil, who's, who's well known, and we went to the AAA offices and asked them, hey, what will it take to get wrestling sanctioned? And they, they said, well, you gotta get a minimum of 16 schools. When Greg um, 
came to our association back uh, many years ago and and uh, floated the idea of, of starting wrestling in the state of Arkansas. You know, we were we were skeptical of it because we didn't uh, we never have had wrestling before. And uh, so we went and we did a press conference and we announced that we would buy wrestling mats for the first 20 schools that would add wrestling. I told them if they didn't make the decision within 30 days, the wrestling mat would go to the next school. And we got 20 schools real quickly. We went back to the AAA and when we went to the board, they made a deal with us that if we got 40 schools, it would be sanctioned. And so we went back out, did another press conference, and we got 24 more schools, and we, we got wrestling sanctioned with 44 schools. You know, you see a lot of pride in, in the uh, young men and women that uh, participate in wrestling in the state of Arkansas. And, uh, you know, it makes us, as an association, uh, proud of, of, of what, um, what Greg and, and um, his, his staff have done. I got asked to speak at Washita Baptist University the president, Rex Horn, happened to be in that speech, and afterwards he asked me if I wanted to go to lunch. And we sat down at lunch, and he said that he wanted me to uh, help him with his insurance there at the college. And I told him, I said, I'd love to help you with your insurance, but I'd rather talk about wrestling at Washita Baptist University. I didn't know much about wrestling, but there was an instant uh, trust that I had in Greg Hatcher, and I believed that for Washita and for me, he wanted the best for our university and the best particularly for our young men who could be wrestlers. As a college president, I looked upon it as a way to help grow the enrollment. And uh, we found that the wrestlers on our campus were good students. They were fitting in well on campus. Uh, they did things beyond just simply the sport and became an integral part of Washita Baptist University. So when I saw that, and I saw what it represents character, it represents discipline, it fits with the mission of our university. For me, it became a no-brainer. And when I talked with my colleagues uh, who were college presidents about sports and how to grow enrollment, uh, I too became an advocate for collegiate wrestling. Today, we have bought mats for 65 different Arkansas high schools, six different Arkansas colleges, and another six colleges outside the state of Arkansas. Anything is possible with Greg. Um, when you think you can't do something, um, he'll find a way to make it happen. Um, he's a doer, and, and I've never been around a guy um, like him. Um, there's guys out there, that, but I've never seen anybody at this level um, that uh, can make things happen. And, and, and Greg is, a, is a, a guy that you want on your side if, if you're trying to achieve something, that's for sure. Well, here on the complex, we have the wrestling facility, a basketball facility. He has soccer fields, a brand new tennis facility that um, has just finished in the last couple of months. He has a big heart and, and he's, he's about the kids and, and he's about um, uh, just being as generous as he can to, uh, to, to help and, and to motivate kids in the right way. Uh, we are a very competitive family. Um, I have my wife, Lee. Kelsey, who's 27, Haley and Larkin, who are twins, who are 23, Lane, uh, who's 18, and Maddie, my last daughter, who's 16. They are all busy every day, all year, playing sports just the way I want them, and it kept them out of a lot of trouble. It's a great honor to be inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. I accept it on behalf of all the athletic directors, superintendents, and college presidents who said yes to wrestling because they're the real heroes. All right, make sure to check out the National Wrestling Hall of Fame and Museum on Facebook for dozens of documentaries and other great features on the history of our sport. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Adidas Wrestling. Stay tuned. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built.
All right, from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Spokane, Washington, youth coaches Mike Krause and Mario Flores are taking a group of 30 athletes on a 21-day journey across the country. On Saturday, the Adidas Battle of the Bus Tour stopped by our studios for a very special edition of Takedown Radio. these guys in and happy to have the help from uh, Coach Krause and everybody else. So looking forward to a good clinic. Welcome to Legends of Gold. place in, in the country. Uh, they got, just like uh, Coach Nolan said, they got five mats, a uh, great sauna room, workout room, uh, dorms, a lot of rooms to uh, host kids, cafeteria to feed these kids. They got a bus. I mean, they got it all here. So we come here because that's what we want. And we want to train with tougher kids to get us better. All right, special thanks to Gary Abbott, Taylor Miller, Richard Emmel, and all our friends at USA Wrestling, and of course, the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Special thanks to the coaches who brought all those athletes into the studio. We had a ball. Don't forget to check us out online for more interviews, features, and weekly prizes. It's all at TakedownWrestle.com. And so for all of us in Des Moines, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.